So this is the deal. Two things I want to talk about. I want to talk about just like some conceptual things. And then I want to talk, I know, right? It's gone though. It's perfected. It's moved on. Praise Jehovah. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about a conceptual thing that's rooted in some very specific astrology. And then I want to talk about just how we can break up some chunks of time over the next few months. Like how can we kind of, I mean, astrology for me is part language, part calendar. And the whole function of a calendar is for us to segment and name time. Like today is Friday. We call it Friday because Freya, it's Venus's day, obviously. Um, but also it's Friday because in the grand scheme of the seven days of the week, Friday has a specific meaning. It comes before Saturday and that's the weekend, so on and so forth, whatever. So astrology is the same way that we're naming and we're segmenting time. We're giving time a name, but with astrology, we're interpreting and giving time a very specific meaning. So I want to talk about time in general. And then, like I said, I want to talk about the specifics of kind of what we're coming up on. Today was a milestone day because um, Mars and Jupiter um, have finally completed their conjunction in Sagittarius. And it's been building since February 7th. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that one of the things that I've been talking about is this idea of critical mass and reaching a particular peak and reaching this culminating point. Um, I've used language like this time feeling like a kind of collective manic depression. And I think that anyone who's been paying attention has felt that as well, that on the one hand, there is this kind of abysmal, like chaotic kind of pessimism that we feel about the reality that we occupy but also there is a freedom that many of us feel it's like somebody stopped the hamster wheel and abruptly changed our relationship to each other to time and space our routine and then some of us have been trying to keep running like the hamster wheel has stopped for many of us Meanwhile, a lot of us are like still running. The The analogy I gave it yesterday is like you're running full speed ahead and you get to a wall. And instead of stopping and surveying the landscape, seeing if maybe you should turn or if there's another way to get to your destination, you just kind of stand there at the door running in place. Like that's what people are doing. And, and I want to say this with the caveat of there are so many people who are... Um, still rolling uh, the people who are working in grocery stores and pharmacies the post office and mail delivery persons the trash picker uppers um, the street cleaners um, the utility companies although they scam into but there are so many people who are still running because they are essential and i really hope that as a consequence of all of this we are able to rightly value the labor that is critical and essential to keeping our lives running, right? So with that being said, one of my major themes um, that I wrote about in my blog post on Saturn and Capricorn, Saturn entered sidereal Capricorn January 23rd. It will be there until like January something 2023. But one of the things that I've spoken about is just the nature of time. Like, what is time? Why do we time? Why do we count? Why do we measure? Why do we segment? What is the purpose and what is the function? One of the things that I've been thinking about so much recently with regard to that is this sense that, and I want you to listen real close to this part. For many of us, up until this moment, the way that we allocated and used our time was defensive. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Up until this moment, many of us, the way that we have allocated and used our time has been defensive, meaning that we have not owned our time. And so because we have not owned our time, whatever time that we can hold on to, we use it 
in a defensive way is like, this is mine and you can't take it from me and I'm going to do what I want with it. Right. If I just want to smoke weed, I'm going to smoke weed. If I am just going to lay in the bath, I'm going to lay in the bath. If I want to binge on Netflix and I'm going to binge on Netflix. Right. And it's this kind of rebellious, like staking of ownership of time that has determined how we use our time. And so now many of us can't even fathom the possibility that right now nobody is telling you what to do with your time. And instead of taking a moment to pause and to breathe, many of us are working over time trying to duplicate the same structures that have oppressed us and been imposed on us in our work. Hey, Tim, I hope you're healing good over there. So I want to challenge you guys. I want you to begin to think of this moment as, yes, some of us are working from home and some of us have obligations like meetings, but for the most part, nobody is standing over your shoulder, looking at you, telling you that you have to do something. How much have you internalized the fact that you don't own your time, that you actually have your time to yourself and you're still giving it over to somebody else? Right? So in this vein, I talked about Saturn and Capricorn and the sign Capricorn specifically being about mastery. And I wonder if there's something that I wrote in my 2020 sidereal astrology guide that um, might offer some insight. You know, I don't really be remembering because when I'm in it, I'm in it. And then when it's over, I move on to something else. Okay. Let's see. Ah, yes, my eyeballs went right to the perfect paragraph. This is where I am. If you have the 2020 Sidereal Astrology Guide, I am reading December where I wrote all about um, Saturn and Capricorn and the Great Conjunction in Capricorn. And I actually advised you guys to go to this page first. Okay, Saturn, um, Saturn in Capricorn, it's not in Aquarius until about... 757, I think, Central Time PM today. Moon is still in Capricorn. Okay, Saturn in Capricorn in its own sign says that the reality we face is determined by our perceptions of time. Oh, right. I'm going to say that again. Saturn in Capricorn, its own sign says that the reality we face is determined by our perceptions of time and the resources available to us at any given moment. It abandons open-ended possibilities and embraces finite declarations of what is right here, right now. Hey, okay. Um, so, some of the major shifts that are happening around us in our lives, in this world, as a consequence of this whole thing. And I want to be careful here because, yes, there is the virus. It's a real thing. But the ultimate impact on us on society has to do with time. Time is the way that we create a consensual reality. I'm gonna repeat that and then I'm gonna translate it or interpret it for you. Time is a way that we collectively create a consensual reality. Time is this intangible structure 
this intangible conceptual reality that we all agree to, right? It's this thing that defines limits for us in a conceptual way that has really concrete consequences. For example, if I say today is Friday, right? Depending on your profession, you could be like, woo, it's the weekend, right? In another space and time, if you were a bartender, this would be one of your best days, right? You'd be ready to make your, you know, your $1,000 night this week on tips and all of that stuff, right? So time is a way that we conceptualize a consensual reality. What is consensual reality? Saturn's placements in particular signs can teach us all about what Saturn is. Saturn in Capricorn teaches us about the physical limits of our bodies, death. Saturn in Libra, though, teaches us about the consensual nature of reality. Do you know why reality is a consensus? Because any time that you rebel against time, people say you're not being realistic, right? When you're not fully buying into and surrendering to our conceptual or consensual measurement of times, you're told you're not being realistic. You think you have forever, don't you? Right? Or we tell children, you don't know anything. You're too young to know anything, right? Because they haven't had enough time. They haven't had, they haven't lived enough time, right? Or we say, oh, you're so young, you have time, right? These are consensual ideas of time. And right now, we're disoriented because we don't know what any time means. Enter astrology because it's the study of a time and a season for all things, measuring and segmenting and interpreting time. So let's lay this out real quick, right? I talked about some of this in my 2020 forecast. Um, right, we even have the phrase tomorrow is not promised. And that phrase is meant to almost minimize and trivialize anything that you might be worried about. And you're just supposed to not worry and you're supposed to forget and you're supposed to just live like tomorrow is not promised, right? So anyways, I talked about some of this in my 2020 forecast talk. If you don't have it, you can download it from my online shop, shop.thepeoplesoracle.com or just go to thepeoplesoracle.com and click shop. It's like 90 minutes, I think, of me talking about all of the astrology of 2020. So right now we're in the midst of a major transition. The two elemental themes of 2020 are earth and fire. Earth is physical, tangible, evidential, measurable, quantifiable reality. It is what is, it is what you bump up against, it is what you can measure, what you can quantify, what you can symbolically uh, put into words. This is a green plant because the visible spectrum of light waves to the human eye are at this frequency, right? I can prove that's green because whatever we call green, you know, visible, visible light waves of this particular frequency, we call that green. So I can prove it's green. I can prove that this is, this is this size because I can measure it, right? These are tangible things. Sometimes you don't even need to measure it. There is a wall there. You can disagree, go walk through it and then we'll see who's right, right? These things are not up for debate and this is earth. Earth is, only way you're getting up out of here is you die. Earth is just because you need it doesn't mean you're gonna get it or you can have it. Earth is um, all you got is $5 and that's all you got is $5 and so you better figure out how you can live on $5 because you ain't get no more $5, that's all you got. You see what I'm saying? It's this very much like pragmatic, you know, realistic, like this is not about your feelings. I don't really care what you like. I don't care what you believe. It's not antagonistic. It's not punishment. It's not um, 
a negative something here with earth it's just what it is right like cyanide is poisonous in certain doses like do you really want to argue about this or do you just need to go um try that cyanide out and see how that's going to work for you right this is this is earth the other element that is so dominant in 2020 is fire and we are leaving the fire phrase phase moving into the earth phase this fire energy really got its wheels churning at the new moon solar eclipse in sagittarius december 26 2019 and this day to day with mars and jupiter conjoined in sagittarius is this kind of peak moment this kind of checkpoint in the fire story what is fire fire is our entitlement fire says i can i see or i believe and thus and so because of those things i am entitled to do this right fire is i am strong and i can lift 50 pounds who gonna check me, right? This is Aries, the physical will, the, the oomph, the audacity to do something, the, the, the capability and the strength. Fire is this conviction, this authority, this sense that I'm seeing this way, it, this way, and this is what it is. Do you see the conflict there with earth, right? Earth is like, this is a wall and I don't need to debate you because the only evidence that you need is to try to walk through it. If you don't believe it's a wall, walk through it. Right. Meanwhile, fire is like, that's not a wall. Even if it is a wall, I can tear it down. And Earth is just like. OK, girl, if you want to like. Right. Fire is. Yes, this is a wall, but this wall doesn't belong here or I'm going to build that wall. Right. This whole thing of having a conviction and intention behind something that's rooted in your own belief about who you are, your own belief about the way the world works, the, your own belief about the way the world should work. The tension here is that Earth does not really care how you feel, what you believe and what you think you're capable of. Right. We must all contend with the reality that is Earth. But if we fully can succumb to the reality of Earth, there can be neglect. And one of the things that gets so complicated with this, um, and this is one of my really big themes around this fire Earth thing, this sense of entitlement versus neglect. Entitlement is kind of like, you know, it's so funny in America, we call like our social safety nets here, like social security and all of those things, we call them entitlements, right? Which is really funny because culturally there's a negative connotation with that word, when in fact they're not really entitlements. Well, they are entitlements in the fact that like people actually pay for them, right? So like if I work and pay into unemployment, I'm entitled to unemployment because I've paid into it. If I, um, if I work until I'm 65 and retire, I'm entitled to Medicaid or Medicare because I've paid into it. Whereas in our culture, we are taught that entitlement is wrong, especially if you're a woman. How dare you? Who do you think you are? Who do you, you think you can be president? Women can't be president. You're too emotional, right? Right. This audacity and this sense of entitlement is kind of put in check as if entitlement is wrong. But if it's a man, right, entitlement is not wrong. So here we are really having to reckon with our relationship with entitlement. Um, I tweeted this off last night and I said that those of us who think entitlement is a bad word are left victimized by calls for civility and virtue signaling, right? We, we buy into the fact that entitlement is wrong. And it's so instead of going and taking what's rightfully ours, we try to rationalize and convince and debate about it. And there's certain things that are just not up for debate, right? So this is what we're, 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 we're working with right now. We're making this transition from fire to earth. What does this really pa pra practically look like? This really practically looks like fire. I'm so fired up. I'm voting for such and such. We need Medicaid for all and 
how are you going to pay for it and who should get it and who shouldn't get it and cancel student loan debt and rah, 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 Bernie bros and Biden hoes and Elizabeth Warren goes. I don't know. I just made that up. Don't don't repeat that. Um, right. But you get my point that just fired up. Everybody's so just like, yeah, I'm not voting for Biden, Right. And do you see how quickly none of that matters? Do you see how quickly they're canceling student loan payments? Do you see how quickly they're trying to give us a, um, a, a, a stipend from the government? Do you see how quickly they are expanding unemployment benefits? Do you see how quickly they are doing all of the things that they said they didn't believe that we should do because the reality is? The reality is if we do not do those things, we no longer have a solvent economy, right? If we do not put a moratorium on foreclosures and evictions, if we do not, right, do all of these different things, the consequences of reality, right, these things are no longer a matter of belief, of political or moral conviction, right? It's no more, right? It's, 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 no one cares who you're voting for right now. And I know a lot of people will disagree with that, but the fact of the matter is like, are we even going to have an election, right? The idea that voting by mail was just, oh no, we can't do that. And now look what they're doing. People are voting by, right? Like West Virginia and a few other states are now making sure that both their primaries and their presidential election, people can vote absentee by mail, right? No exceptions, right? These things, we no longer argue about whose identity deserves to define our political reality, right? We're no longer arguing about that, right? Over this next week, right, Mars enters Capricorn on March 22nd, Jupiter enters Capricorn on March 29th, and Mars conjoins Saturn and Capricorn on March 31st. This is Earth. This Earth story really takes root very end of March, beginning of April, and it peaks in May. So we are dealing with this Earth thing hardcore until May, right? The new moon in Taurus is May 22nd. And on that day, Sun, Moon, Mercury and Venus will all be in Taurus. Jupiter and Saturn will be in Capricorn and poor Mars in Aquarius is the only air sign planet. No fire, no water, right? And so this realistic, this reality, this one of the, I think one of the phrases I'm thinking of is like necessity, right? Necessity is that this is not a conversation about why, right? The Sagittarius that we've been having for so long, really since Trump got inaugurated into his stolen position as president, right? That's when Saturn entered um, Sagittarius. Matter of fact, that was January 27th. 2017 and this whole Sagittarius story is about what I believe and why I believe it and why you should believe what I believe and 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 right I call this radicalization right a convert a collective conversion experience right this collective conversion experience is about radicalizing you to stoke in you a sense of entitlement right that really when it boils down to the essence of life. If we do not feel that we are entitled to life and body, nothing else matters. If I, as a person, do not believe that I am entitled to live, none of my other beliefs Sorry about that, y'all, I'm back. None of my other beliefs matter. What I care about another woman and what she does with her body and whether she wants to abort or carry forward or take uh, birth control or not, what I believe about 
whether who should get food stamps and who should get health care and not. And none of that really matters unless I myself personally believe that I am entitled to live. Once we accept that reality, now it becomes about rightly discerning that which is a threat to my entitlement to live. This is where the next set of eclipses come in. So we kind of have like a logical, smooth transition here. We go from Sagittarius to Capricorn, the collective conversion experience and critical mass to encountering the constraints of reality. I call that transition the consequence of conviction that gets us into the Capricorn so that by April, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn are all in Capricorn, really a rare and unprecedented alignment. Right. Then we go to Venus entering Taurus on March 27th. Right. March 27th, Venus entering Taurus. We begin our sixth month month transit of Venus and Taurus that includes a Venus retrograde. The last time Venus retrograde was in Taurus was May. No, 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 no. 2012. March through July 2012, okay? And this retrograde is already really, the foundation is already really being laid. The changes that we've made in how we greet each other, the changes that have naturally come in how we socialize, the changes that have come of how we gather in space and time, all of these things. Yeah, I see a lot of people logging off and coming back on. All of these things are Venus. They're the cultural norms. There are behavioral norms. There are gender, race, class, and sex norms, right? Uh Uh-oh, 